I ask you to watch this video to learn more about the plight of one of the most iconic species on Earth, the rhino. We each have a role to play in being part of the solution. Nothing can bring them back once they're gone. A white rhinoceros lies dead in the Kruger National Park, South Africa. Her leg and back are sliced open, her eyes gouged out, her horns have been sawn off at the stump. It's a very gory, bloody situation, crime scene that we end up dealing with. Using butcher's knives, the team cuts into the animal's flesh, looking for a dart or bullet. Investigators with metal detectors comb the scene for spent cartridges and other evidence. We just find it very difficult to accept that we have to lose rhinos as we do at the rate we're doing in order to satisfy those particular needs in a far distant country. After just a few minutes' work, the metal detector rings out. It's found the bullet. Hilani Royal Park, Swaziland. The country has been hit hard by poaching over the years. By the 1960s, nearly all of the native big game had been wiped out from poaching, overhunting and habitat loss. The rhino wars of the 1970s and 80s devastated what was left of the species. For more than 50 years, the Riley family has worked hard to protect rhinos, helping the country flourish as a destination for ecotourism creating the country's first national parks and nature reserves. All signs seem to point to better days. But in the last few years, the rhino wars have been brought back to Africa, and Swaziland's rhino population faces an uncertain future. At dusk, just before it got dark on the 3rd of June, um, they located a rhino cow and calf and uh, they shot the rhino mother. Well practiced, very good shot. The animal went 10 meters before uh, she collapsed and they removed the horns and the guys made off, made off with the horns and were back in South Africa with the horns the next day. In June 2011, Swaziland lost its first rhino to poachers in 20 years. It's heartrending. Um, You'll find a, a rhino cow with a baby calf without a horn, just a pimple on its nose. And the mother goes down, and that calf usually will defend the mother, won't allow the poachers to get anywhere near it. Mm. And they end up having to shoot it too. And then they chop off the, the horn with, with, a, with a chainsaw and half the face with it and just leave the rhino there. And we've had several instances where the rhino has slipped off the drugs and staggered to its feet without a face, uh, with, with bits of meat just hanging from its nose. How, how do you deal with people like that? But Swaziland's poaching problem is not as serious as that of its neighbor, South Africa, where nearly 90% of all rhinos live. Kruger National Park has paid a heavy price for having the largest rhino population in the world. More than half of South Africa's rhino killings, 252, took place here in 2011. I believe it's, it's a big threat, a huge problem for us at the moment. The worst case scenario is that we lose every single rhino on the African continent. Ken Maggs is head of the Environmental Crime Investigation and Air Services and is a senior member of the Wildlife Crime Reaction Unit. Set up in 2010, it's an umbrella body to coordinate efforts between South Africa's park authorities, the police, the military and the prosecuting authorities in the fight against the rhino killings. We focus largely on the organised crime aspect of the environmental crime impacting sand parks. We're very, very fortunate. You know, we, we really have a, a dedicated team, committed, 
There's nothing better than a highly trained, well-motivated field ranger that stands between the rhino and, of course, the poacher. What we're doing this morning is we got um, an informant, a confidential informant of ours, contacted us saying that he had information of a group of poachers coming in. He couldn't give us the number, um, but they are armed, they are coming after rhino. Bruce is one of only 17 staff who make up the Rhino Protection Unit, covering a park the size of the Netherlands. Poaching crews often use trackers to find the rhinos and then radio their position to a shooter. The horns can be hacked off and out of the park within minutes. In certain areas, we have as many as three to four groups hunting at once that have infiltrated into the parks. In the first three months of 2011, 89 suspects were arrested for poaching in the park. But for every poacher caught, many more escape. Today's search proves fruitless. Rhinos had been near extinction before commercial trade in rhino horn was banned by CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, in 1977. The black rhino was the most numerous of the world's rhino species. There were 100,000 in the 60s, but they were hunted and poached until just 2,400 remained. If not for CITES, the rhino would be extinct in the wild today. It is because of CITES that the species has recovered to the point where we now have in the order of 25,000 rhino on the planet. But over the last few years, poaching has skyrocketed. Poaching levels are unsustainable. This species will be driven to extinction in the wild if these trends continue. Rhinos are one of the big five. They bring in millions of dollars worth of tourism to South Africa. Throughout the country, community-led initiatives linking employment, infrastructure, education and healthcare with conservation and species protection are being promoted. One such programme is this thatching cooperative, providing jobs for local women living in and near Kruger. The park is very important to our community because it creates jobs for us. We, the people, and the tourists are coming from far away to here and they leave money here, so the park creates the jobs for us. This is the only employment these people have. They rely on that employment to support their families. Um, if they were to lose that, it means that an entire family could go hungry. Ben Jans van Rensburg is head of enforcement at CITES. CITES approach to conservation recognizes that the long-term future for wildlife is dependent on sustainable rural development and that local people need to be partners in enforcement. A lot of the poaching that's going on at the moment, to my opinion, is crimes of greed, that is, people chasing money. People involved in poaching are actually playing with other people's lives. If they will continue killing their rhinos, it means that we will not even find this job that we have now. Without rhinos, there will be no jobs. It's a dangerous business. Heavily armed rangers and poachers play a deadly game of cat and mouse. Enforcement authorities risk their lives on a daily basis to protect rhino populations. There are dedicated individuals that are prepared to go out there night and day up against well-trained, well-motivated, ruthless poaching groups in order to safeguard rhino, knowing that at any time they can be killed. So the dedication and commitment is, is of the highest caliber. Rhino horn has been used in traditional medicine in China and Vietnam for centuries. But in the new global economy, where products can be bought at the click of a mouse, the demand for rhino horn is exploding in emerging economies in Asia. Sections of a new Asian elite are willing to pay whatever it takes and a new international smuggling mafia is invading Africa to satisfy that demand. And because individual horns are compact, 
they can be transported easily. We're picking up uh, the, the horns uh, by means of scanners at the airport. Every bag must be scanned. Marilee van Heerden is a senior prosecutor at the National Prosecuting Authority of South Africa. I work in the Johannesburg area of jurisdiction and we have in our cases in court realised that most of our accused are people from Vietnam. Uh, with exception of I think one or two other people, it was all Vietnamese citizens. Vietnam, once home to thousands of Javan rhinos. In 2011, poachers killed the nation's last animal living in the wild. Yet the country has no shortage of rhino horn. Vietnam has become a key destination, targeted by traffickers in the illegal trade. Hanoi resident Mr. Sun, not his real name, paid $2,000 for his piece of horn. After 20 minutes of rubbing the horn against a specifically designed bowl with the drawing of a rhino on the side, Mr. Sun poured the mixture into a glass and drank the milky liquid. In the markets of Hanoi, it doesn't take long to find rhino horn for sale. But its authenticity is questionable. The CITES Management Authority in Vietnam believes a significant percentage of rhino horn for sale in the markets is fake. <laughs> Though black market prices vary widely, dealers in Vietnam quoted prices ranging from $40 to $140 a gram, which at the top end is double the price of gold and can exceed the price of cocaine. The Vietnamese government and enforcement authorities believe that Vietnam is only a transit country for rhino horn before it reaches its final destination. A source country can't deal with a threat like this on its own. It needs the support of transit and destination countries where, where those products will end up. We're all in this together. The only way we're going to tackle this problem is by stopping the poaching, stopping the smuggling, and stopping the consuming. Two white rhino run from the helicopter as it swoops down. The shot takes one out. Within seconds, the tranquilizer kicks in and the three-ton animal falls to the ground, stunned. The team rushes in and gets to work quickly before the drugs wear off. We don't have any other choice but to save the rhino for our future generations. Um, I don't believe the world can afford to lose a species like that. Dr. Cindy Harper is the director of the Veterinary Genetics Lab at the University of Pretoria and the creator of a new rhino DNA database. The DNA database is a collection of DNA profiles of all the rhinos in Africa. That's what we're aiming for. The most important function is to assist with the investigation of rhino poaching cases. Blood is taken, identifying markers are cut into the rhino's ears, and microchips are inserted to track the horn. The new technique allows any rhino horn seized by police at border crossings to be identified, linking all perpetrators along the crime chain and helping bring about a prosecution. The DNA database is invaluable in our prosecutions because DNA will be able to link the rhino horn that we found at the airport, for example, back to a poaching incident somewhere in the country. The team will take the DNA from three more rhino that day. The Northern Cape lost its first rhino this year. 
the government of South Africa is fighting back. Soldiers from the South Africa National Defence Force have deployed in the Kruger. In 2012, three rhino poachers were sentenced to 25 years imprisonment, the toughest sentences ever handed down for rhino poaching in South Africa. As a prosecutor, you must understand if you want to come to our country and poach our national heritage, you will meet the full might of the law. But the slaughter hasn't stopped. This is going to be a tough, long fight. But if we all work together, range states, consumer states, at national level and international level, we will win this fight. They must just stop killing the rhinos because it, it is like they are killing us. 